In this video, we are going to see overloading methods in PHP. So what is meant by overloading? The function's name will be same. Depending upon the type of argument and number of argument, the compiler will automatically find, when you call a particular function, the compiler will correctly find out which function it has to execute. Even if the name is same, depending upon the signature. When I say signature, it is nothing but the parameters and its type. So the compiler can differentiate which function it calls and it correctly execute that particular function. So function overloading is the ability to create multiple functions of the same name. So it gave you the liberty to create the, uh, many functions with the same name, but with the different implementations. So that is called function overloading. See, for example, this is a little bit Java code. We have static void. We have uh, written a function called print. Here also a print. Here also a print. The function name of same. Same. In C and all, since it doesn't support whoops concept, so there is no overloading at all. It will post you error because you have written three functions with the same name. But in object-oriented languages, since it supports overloading, even if there are many copies of the same function, the, uh, the compiler will check when a particular when this particular function is called, whether this is called or this is called, this is called, how it differentiates depending upon the parameter. If you say if you call this function print with a string as the first argument and next is an integer number, then it correctly matches this and it exudes only this. It will not exude this. If you pass, if you call the print function with a number, only a single integer number, then it will execute only this. It will not go and execute this or this. Even if it is a single parameter, it will check the data type, whether it is a numeric, uh, that is an integer or a string. If the value passed is only a string, on, then only this will be executed. And this is said to be overloading. Why it is called overloading? The same function name is written again and again with a different implementation. So function overloading in PHP, this is in other languages, but in PHP, you have to handle it differently. Even if the overloading concept is there, you have to write it differently. So it can be done with a magic function called double underscore call. Already we have seen two magic functions. It is constructor and destructor. Where you write double underscore construct and double underscore the same way you have one more magic function in order to carry over the overloading methods in PHP that is double underscore then call. This function takes two arguments. One is the name of the method and the other one is number the arguments, number of arguments. So now uh, the general syntax is like this. Now we will see the, uh, the small program. As you are saying, we have already I have explained here the same thing. Then you want to uh, execute area of a circle and area of a rectangle. Just imagine this is a rectangle. Then you pass two. Uh, if you pass single parameter, then it correctly go and match this and execute this. If you pass two parameter, then it correctly goes and execute. It will not execute this. Now we'll see with an example. Yes. Now, 
in PHP, you how to I already told you you can do function overloading by having this function double underscore call and the arguments are the method name and the arguments. So now we will see how this is executed. Let us say we are defining a class called shape and then we are using the function overloading method. So function double underscore call followed by name and arg. Now inside the function you have to check whether uh, what, what is the name of the function. So if the name of the function first is an area, then it check for number of arguments. So how it can find by using the box. So this will be an array of arguments. First will be the name, the method name, and the second argument will be an array of parameters. So now here it will count since it is an array of parameters. You can pass the uh, building function count for this so that it will calculate how many parameters are passed here. Now, depending upon that, you can calculate case zero. If no parameters, then this returns zero. If only one parameter is passed, then we are calculating the area of the circle. So three pi r square, 3.14. And the one argument we consider as a radius. So this is simple. Thing. Then case two, we calculate the rectangle. So L will now we consider the two arguments length into breadth, L into B. Now from the main program, how we can access this method overloading? So here, first we have instantiated an object and it, uh, which is of type shape, that is class. Then uh, here we call the function circle, that is object name, then area. Now, uh, same way here, we create another uh, object called rect. And again, we have, uh, there is an object is created, which is of that shape. Then here we call the function area uh, with the two arguments. Now here is what we are checking the name of the function. First, when you call this, the PHP will check for the this type of, whether this method is defined inside the class or not say this shape class but here it is not handling the shape class explicitly so when it is not there the next step it will make this uh, it will call this function by default so if first it checks whether a name with this function is existing or not method is existing or not. if not then this function underscore double underscore call will be called which in turn pass the name of this function and the number of arguments as this parameter. Now we check whether the name is equal to area. If so, it will go inside and execute accordingly. Here, since we are passing one parameter, this will be calculated and it will return. Then again, we call this with the two parameters. So, and the name is area. So that will be matched and it say, okay. Then it will execute the switch statement where the number of argument is two. So this statement will be executed and the value will be returned and it will be printed here. Now we'll see how this gets executed. It is overloading function one. Now see here, area of the circle. Now we pass one single argument and so the three is passed and uh, this will be calculated and returns. Same way, area of the rectangle, L into B, which is nothing but 48. That is what it does. Now we'll see one more, one more example for overloading. Is here, we defined a class called friend, and then inside we have two variables, name and message. Then there is a function called speak, where we print this value. The value present in this payment message. Then another function is that is called set message, where we assign value for this message. For this name, we assign from the main uh, through the uh, set name parameter. Okay, function. Okay, we'll see that for this message we are using this function to assign value. Now. How we can assign value for this name? That is what we are going to do with overloading. 
So the first statement is to creating a new friend. Then here we create an object, which is of type friend. Okay. Then we call this uh, set name. We call the method called set name with the variable Anita, the parameter as Anita. Now, when this get executed, it checks here whether set name is there. Speak is there. Set message is there. There is no set name. So now what happens automatically? This overloading method is called. So here it passes well for the method set name is passed and the argument it take here it is only one. So the per arguments count will be one. Now it is also a array. So it passed as an array. Anita is passed as an array. Now what happened here? Next step what we do is we check using the if class whether the method name equal to set name. Yes, it is set name. Then, then the next step, we check how many arguments are there. Because the set name we call three times. See here, one is Anita, then again we have done this, then again we have passed it to three parameters. So first we check whether how many arguments are there. First, we first time we calling only with the one parameter. So now it goes, it checks, and then for this, this name, it assigns this value. That is, since it is an array, the array value starts from 0, 1, 2. So the first argument definitely will be in arguments of 0. So this is an array. Okay. So argument of 0, and it will be there. Now that is assigned. This, so for this uh, member variable, we have assigned this value, first value. Then what happened? It comes out. Okay. Now it is uh, assigned. And then what we are doing in the next step is set message. Hello from Anita. So we set this value for using the set message. Here it is, set message, and we pass this value. So for this local uh, variable, member variable, this message is assigned. Then what we are doing is speak, call the method. So when we speak, this is printed. Already this name is assigned as Anita. And for this, we have assigned the value hello from Anita. So that uh, Anita says hello from uh, Anita. Like that it will print. Then what we have done is then the next step after the speak we call set name again with the two parameters. So again it checks for set name it is not there so automatically this method is called. Here it uh, verifies the set name. So now it goes inside it checks whether it is count equal to one. No. Now it is count equal to two. So this zip class will be executed. Where this name it assigns the first value and for this message it assigns the second value. It is Welcome to PHP. Now what happened? We don't call set message. Instead, we assign this value here itself. Now um, we call the function. Uh, that is, uh, we call the speak. Function speak. Now this name and uh, message which is stored in this here. That is welcome to PHP. Radha, welcome to PHP. That will be printed. Then again we call set name with three arguments. Now it goes there, matches this, and this is what the class it gets true. So here what we do, argument 0 is assigned to the, for the name. And for message, argument 1 and 2 are combined, concatenated and assigned. Now it will be printed. Now we'll see how it gets executed. We'll see the output. See here, creating new friend. Then a friend is created. Object is created. Now we call this with a single argument, Anita. So now what is that? Anita says this message. This message already, uh, that is set message. We have this set message, hello from Anita. So Anita says, hello from Anita. That's what printed. Then Radha and welcome to PHP. Those are all the name and message. So Radha says, first here we have given says as a string. So Radha says, welcome to PHP. Then here, set name, we have passed three arguments. Sveta, learning PHP script. So Sveta says, learning PHP script, because these two are concarnated here, as single message. So this is how overloading works in PHP. That is, it will check for the name, method name, when it is called, when it is not found, then it executes this overloading method. So that's how it finds the matching method name 
and then it gets triggered. The same function can be the same uh, call uh, function double underscore call can be used for sending name for another method also. Suppose I have some other method, I can pass that also by using uh, same function call. But it 